Ever thought of installing solar panels on your roof? In this video, I'll take you through how I approached choosing a system and an installer and follow the whole process through of installation right through to commissioning of a fully working system. I first started looking at solar as an option for our house here about 15 years ago. At that time I was offered solar thermal with evacuated tube panels on the roof that heated water. PV or photovoltaic panels were still very expensive in those days and nowhere near as efficient as they are now. Things have come a long way in that time and continue to do so. It would be very easy just to wait till next year for next year's model and the very latest technology. But one of the things I've learned through this process is that when you think the time is right for you, it's worth going for it as soon as you can. Start generating and saving money. Realistically, it's taken about a year of research and five months since I first started contacting installers to get quotes to the point where we've had it installed on the roof and the system's up and running. I've learned a lot about solar over the last year and I'll share my tips and thoughts with you as I go through. What I've installed may not be right for you, but I'll certainly give you plenty to think about and consider when choosing a system for your own circumstances. So where do you start? So I started out looking at solar websites and plenty of YouTube videos from installers and people like myself who were putting solar in and sharing their experiences, both good and bad. I joined a number of Facebook groups, which I found very useful. I came away from that research with a whole list of specific products and manufacturers that I wanted to use for this. Then the reality of the solar market kicked in and I had to revisit many of those choices. I soon came to realize that the choices really came down to what was available at the time. Checking out the specs for yourself, asking advice in the groups from other users, and discussing your requirements and thoughts with your chosen installer to see what they recommended and were able to supply and fit. They will often have preferred brands or products that they like to use regularly. They know they work well together and how to fit them correctly. It really does come down to you to do your own research and make sure you understand what you're being offered, the pros and cons of each product, how well they work together, the warranties, the reputation of the products and the manufacturers, and the suitability for your needs. You may not get everything you want. Sometimes you're just gonna to have to make compromises and choices based on what's available. Finding an installer can be tricky. All the good ones are very busy right now, but there are some resources to look at. I'd say the key thing is to look for a certified MCS installer. There are one or two other organizations that certify people, but not everybody accepts those certifications. So do be very careful. You can check on the MCS website to make sure that that particular installer is certified and what they're certified to install. MCS has a list of good practice requirements that all certified installers must follow. There are plenty of new companies springing up out there to fill the demand. That doesn't mean they're bad, but do do your checks and look at customer feedback, see how many installs they've done, and just make sure that what people are telling you is accurate. Finding an installer that you feel you can trust and work with is absolutely vital to the process. Safety is an important issue too. Making sure that your roof is structurally sound to take the weight of the panels, that they're fitted correctly to withstand high wind loading, and the correct cable specifications are used for the very high DC voltage and current that's floating around under those solar panels. Without proper MCS certification, you may find that further down the road, you're gonna have problems with equipment warranties, getting insurance, and certainly finding power companies that will pay you to import your surplus energy. Choosing the system, what's right for you? Work out how you expect to use the system. Do you have people at home all day or just the evening? 
Are you looking to use as much of the energy yourself as you can or make a surplus that you sell back to the grid? What's your current energy usage per day? Are you planning on getting an electric vehicle anytime soon or move house within the next 10 years? How do you heat your home and water? These all impact on how you use power, when you use it, and how best to design a system to get the most out of it for you. And everybody's circumstances will be different. Should I get a battery? Battery storage systems help you store the energy that you generate during the daytime and use it in the evenings after the sun goes down. If you're gonna be using all your energy during the daytime, you may not need a battery system and that expense may not be worthwhile. Some users will charge up their battery during a sunny day and also top it up on cheap rate electricity overnight, minimizing how much power they use from the grid. If your battery system is too small, you may well run out of power during the evening and have to start drawing from the grid. If your battery system is too large, that's gonna impact on your payback time and in extreme cases, you may find that the payback time is longer than the life expectancy of the battery. I think it's safe to say that a well-placed solar system on the roof is very cost-effective and is gonna pay itself back in a fairly reasonable time. The battery system will add significantly to that cost. Right now, there are some tax benefits in the UK to install the entire system in one go. And I've put in a certain amount of battery capacity, but I felt it was prudent to monitor that over a period of time and see whether it's viable for us to install extra capacity a bit further down the road. So again, it all comes down to your expectations of the system, doing the research, running the numbers, and seeing how effective a system might be for you. In some cases, after proper evaluation, you may even decide that a solar system or battery system is just not viable for your circumstances. For my setup, I've put in 10 Jinko 420 watt panels with five on each of two roof slopes facing southeast and southwest, which is as much as I could viably fit on the roof. A Solis 3.6 kilowatt hybrid inverter and seven kilowatts of Pylon Tech lithium iron phosphate batteries. These were all installed and commissioned for me by a local MCS certified installer with over 15 years of experience. And the cost of the entire system on my house with scaffolding, which I paid for separately because I wanted to do some extra work on the house afterwards, came in at just under £11,000 at the beginning of 2023. I had a number of quotes, some of which were higher, mainly because the installers were based further away. I thought it was quite important to have a local installer, someone who could come out more readily if there were any problems with the system in the future. Another quote was generated solely from a picture from Google Maps, although they would have followed that up with a physical inspection before installation. My installer came round and did a physical inspection of the roof, loft and took measurements, checked cable routing, viable locations for the equipment and then on installation day a crew of three arrived to start work on the roof on a bitterly cold February morning. The roof was measured and marked out and steel brackets were fitted to the roof joists. Supports for the panels were bolted in place and levelled with tiles being cut to make everything fit properly. Our installer purchased and installed a number of new tiles to replace cracked or broken roof tiles, all as part of the install. They sealed around the areas where the cables were routed through the roof. The panels were fitted and aligned with wiring terminated and tied up neatly to the framework. Good quality fixings are important as strong winds can rip poorly installed panels clean off the roof. The rest of the panels are fitted and wired up and everything is straightened and tightened up.
and the final panels go onto the southwest slope. Bird protection is very important to stop birds from nesting underneath out of the wind and rain as they can damage the panels and wiring, in extreme cases leading to a fire risk. By the second afternoon the installation crew were also indoors fitting the inverter and electrical system. The inverter was installed in the loft space on fireproof boarding along with two batteries and isolators. The batteries were very heavy and we placed them on a boarded area above a supporting wall, especially as I may wish to add more capacity later. I decided I wanted it all installed close to the loft hatch for easy access when needed. In the kitchen where the power comes into the property, we had a new consumer unit pre-fitted to replace the old fuse panel. Additional isolators, generation meters and backup power supply outlet were fitted again providing ready access to isolate the system and monitoring of the metering. The backup socket is always live, providing power that we can use for say the fridge freezer from the battery backup in the event of a mains power outage. It's important that you check the specifications on your inverter system carefully as they do not all have that option. A dedicated earth cable and earth rod will run into the garden for extra protection as per the manufacturer's requirements. Finally, the system was commissioned, tested and connected to the grid. The installer provided us with all the necessary paperwork, schematics and warranties. And I made the final payment. The whole process only took three days. It's the first morning after commissioning and I'm already seeing power being generated before 8 a.m. in the morning. We're charging the batteries and feeding excess back to the grid. That feeling is awesome. Now we're down to monitoring and evaluation of the system, seeing how well it compared to our expectations, the impact of the weather and our usage patterns, and what are the limitations of the system. Overall, I've been very pleased with our installer. I think they did a great job. They were very professional throughout. They listened to my wishes and accommodated those as much as possible, offering advice throughout the process. Next, there'll be a whole batch of new questions to answer. Should I install more battery capacity? Would I be better off just feeding that excess power back to the grid? What tariff should I go on? Should I, could I, change my daily usage patterns of electricity to get the best benefit out of the system? Or am I just gonna get obsessed with looking at how we use our power? Some of these things are gonna take us a little while to figure out, so do stick around and hit the subscribe button and I'll post updates as and when we get more answers to these questions. And feel free to drop comments or questions down below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Just a quick update as it's taken a little while to finish this video and it's now been three weeks since the system has been up and running. The last three weeks in February and March have been largely wet and dreary with occasional bursts of sunshine here and there. Already in that time I've been incredibly impressed with the system and overall over 60% of the power we've used in the last three weeks has come from solar and battery with a marked reduction of imported electricity by nearly two thirds. I've applied for an SEG tariff and I'm just waiting for that to go live when we should be seeing around 15 pence a unit for any surplus power we export. I hope you found this video useful. I've tried to include all the sorts of information that I was looking for when planning out my system and I wish you the very best of luck on your solar journey.